A new bill was recently proposed to eliminate taxes on Social Security benefits, but there's a catch. So in this video, I'll share who actually benefits if this is passed and then who would end up getting screwed. Hint, I think that it's going to be middle America in the, the long run. And then also, how should we plan our financial future and then our retirement related to this if it happens? If you're like our clients and you've saved a significant amount of, and have significant in investments, but the financial team that you're working with isn't planning for all these what-if scenarios or, or uh, different outcomes that could happen, then reach out to us for a free planning session. We've got a team of experts, CFAs and CFPs and all different credentials at Streamline ready to talk. But let's get into this proposed bill. It was introduced by Congresswoman Angie Craig, and this act seeks to reverse the 1983 amendments that began the whole taxing Social Security in the first place. Up until then, up until 1983, taxes, Social Security uh, was not taxed. Now, they're saying that if this bill is passed, everybody's going to win because one, it eliminates taxation of Social Security benefits. That sounds good, right? It also says that it's going to extend the solvency of the Social Security trust fund. So right now it's expected in 2033 that that uh, Social Security, uh, call it, we'll call it the trust fund, is going to not run out, but it's just going to be underfunded in 2033. And what this act says, it's going to be, if they do this, it can extend it to 2054. So that's good. It also says it can reduce the federal debt. Now, how can that be true if we're eliminating taxes, right? How can there extend solvency? How could they reduce debt if we're actually taking tax revenue away from the government? Something doesn't add up, right? You and I both know uh, somebody's got to foot the bill. So I'll share who I think it is and, and why. But uh, let's get to the fact that the Social Security Trust Fund is going to become insolvent in 2033, which it doesn't mean that it's going to 2033, 2034. It doesn't mean that it's going to completely run out. What that means is for every dollar that they are going to pay out in benefit to, let's say it's a 70 year old, they're only going to be getting 70 to 80 percent uh, funding from Social Security tax. Right. So that's what the insolvency means. So the full benefit would not be paid out. Now, believe it or not, we've been here before. And there was when we were here before, there was a much shorter deadline to get this fixed because back in 1983, that trust fund, Social Security trust fund, it was very close to running out of money. And the solution that they came up with was to tax Social Security benefits. And they said 50 percent tax on the benefits if over a certain dollar amount of uh, income. I'll show you the, the examples. And then 10 years later, they said they raised it to 85% of your benefit can be taxable. So here's what it looked like with how they do the taxing of social security benefit. Let's take married filing uh, joint down here, taxpayers. So less than 32,000 in provisional income, none is taxed between 32 and 44 then uh, there's a portion of it. And then if you're, if you have more than 44,000, then 85% of that income, social security income is taxed. But the unfortunate part about this for the average American is that these thresholds were not indexed for inflation. This is what they looked like when this was introduced, uh, back in 1993 and there's been no change, but the median retirement income, that's continued to increase over time, right? As inflation goes up and things get more expensive and asset levels increase, there's been no change in how they're looking at provisional income. And what that really means is every year, more and more average Americans are paying or are getting their social security taxed more and more. So good news for tax revenue, bad news for the average American. So that's just a quick history lesson. Now let's get back to the current bill that's proposed. So how could it be possible that they want to eliminate tax on uh, the benefits and lower the federal debt and increase solvency? Well, you may have guessed it. They want to increase taxes on workers who make over a certain amount. Here's how it currently works. Everyone in America pays social security tax up to this amount of 168,600. So we're paying 6.2% up to this amount. And then anything above that, you're not paying social security tax on. And it also doesn't count towards your future benefit. It doesn't work into that calculation. So let's say you end up making 
$188,000. Well, $20,000 is not going to have that 6.2% tax. And then also that $20,000 doesn't count towards your future benefit. So now here's what the, the new bill is proposing. They're saying if you make more than $250,000 here, anything above that amount is going to be taxable again, that 6.2%. So if they did this, then if you were making between these two numbers, then nothing really changes for you with social security income and future uh, tax or future social security would be tax free. That's great. But if you make more than 250,000, you'll be paying 6.2% on that money. And it would not increase how much you receive in social security benefits in the future. So it looks a bit like a progressive tax system to me, but here's the thing. Here's how middle America gets impacted. So that $168,000 limit, that maximum taxable wage base, this increases and has been increasing the last 30, 40 years every year with inflation. So this donut hole here will continue to shrink year after year until eventually in about 2035, it's gonna reach $250,000. And then 100% of all income, so 100% of all income will be taxed uh, and you'll pay that social security tax on everything. So that's the negative looking into the future if this happens. Now, what if you're close to retirement now? How should you be thinking about this? Well, it looks like this proposed tax on income and paying into social security wouldn't impact you much. That's my first thought, first opinion, if you're close to retirement and, and you'll begin taking Social Security soon. But should we be doing anything different with our retirement withdrawal projections as we're looking at the strategies, taxable withdrawal strategies? And as a quick reminder uh, for our clients, one of the most uh, dollar-saving uh, things that we can do doesn't just come from the investment strategy and optimizing your investments, but it comes from the tax strategy and paying less tax. And a lot has to do with that withdrawal strategy. That's just a reminder to pay attention to those things and map out your withdrawal strategy. Because seeing the impact and the change of Social Security or whatever it might be, Roth conversions or when you retire and seeing how it really impacts the plan over time, that's a very useful tool to have. And I actually have something for you related to this at the end of this video. But the question sometimes is, should I look at the projection that I've got, that projection we just looked at, with zero tax on Social Security benefits because of this potential new bill? Well, in my opinion, I wouldn't do that since this bill has a long way to go and it could be subject to many changes if, uh, if it does happen. But what I would do is continue to pay attention to what Congress is doing. Right. And, and what are the changes that they're making? It seems like over the last few years, four years specifically, there's been a lot of changes, things like the Secure Act and then 2.0 and then the possible sunset happening next year, tax sunset. So if you want the easy button when it comes to some of these changes, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon, because I'm going to continue to do some of these updates when things change regarding retirement, re regarding tax efficient withdrawal planning, and then also some things on just estate planning and all the things that that make up retirement. Now, if you're interested in saving money through proper withdrawal strategy, check out this video here. And if this was helpful, please click the like button. So hopefully more people can see it. And then I'll see you in the next video. Take care.